Ask the Messengers, the program that deals with substance abuse, real people telling real stories. Hosted by Pastor Lester Lewis, co-host Charlize Wilkerson and Leroy Carey. Produced by David Humphreys. Where there is addiction, there is a chance for recovery. We're trying to help save lives on Ask the Messengers. Welcome to Ask the Messengers TV show. I am your host, Lester Lewis, and this week, the ladies are taking over. That's right, our street reporter, LaShawn Battle, along with a few of her guests, will be letting the world know that women do recover. These ladies share real stories about their addiction and the process women go through to get to recovery. So how long you been in recovery? I've been in recovery, what, wow. It'll be 14 years. I have years. 14 years uh, next month. Yeah. yeah. Okay, what's your yeah. clean date? My clean date is April the 7th. 2005. Right. What's yeah. your clean day? March the 1st, 2006. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we do recover. Yeah. We, it takes some work. Yes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because we, we, we all we got. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Do you have any trust issue with women? So I can't trust myself sometimes. So how do I trust someone else? Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And it's, it's really, I, that, I'm, I'm trying right now as we speak. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to really get trust with women back so hard to where I buy women. Not mm -hmm. in the bed, but literally. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Literally buy them. And I found out that I'm not going to go be broke because you're not my friend. That whole shot. That whole shot, man. I mean, I'm just sharing this because somebody need to hear this because it'll have you in a fetal position. I didn't think that I was worthy of a man or a woman or whatever have you because... When you get in a situation and get your tubes took out, I had a half of a hysterectomy, right? And Sean, I didn't have no urge for nothing. But I got a man that I got to take care of. Y'all hear me though? A man that I got to take care of. So when he want to screw, I must lay down and do it. Until I got out of a, a relationship. And I say, God, look, check this out. I ain't that bad looking. You know what I mean? Right. I, Gucci ain't acting right. Guess what? Start loving me. And that sucker is popping. You mm -hmm. hear me? It's popping. It's ready. What about you? Ready, best friend. Well, that's the question. <laughs> oh, she got me all screwed <laughs> up, huh? <laughs> uh, have you ever confused sex with love? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, and because, uh, okay, one situation, I mean, the guy. And he was so freaking good in bed that love wasn't even necessary, uh -huh. you know. And and and, and because uh, I was so infatuated with the sex, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I thought Yo, it was love until it fell through, and then I realized it was just sex. Mm -hmm. Wasn't no love involved at all. A feeling. It was, it yeah. was all, all yeah. through a sexual feeling. And I thought I was in love and cried when we broke up. Oh, yes, you did. Cried like a mug when we broke up. Hope shot. Hope, hope shot. shot. Mm -hmm. The hope shot is like my best friend. It's my best friend. And like she's been saying all along, you got to have a God. You got to love yourself. You know, uh, it, 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 it's nothing like finding out who you really are. I can't give nobody love unless I love me or even know who I am. So how the hope shot is learn to love yourself. My sponsor told me, take yourself out on a date. When you get in the tub, yeah, light sorry. a candle for yourself. Learn how to be by yourself. One thing that I never did is sleep in the middle of my bed. Uh, welcome. Sleep in the middle. I'm always on this side of the bed because this is where I've been trained to be. She said, Train. sleep in the middle of your bed. So I learned how to love me, how to sleep in the middle of my bed, and how to be all right with being with me. Latia, yes. how long you been clean? Uh, in April, next month it'll be 21 years. What's your clean date? It is uh, April 13th, 1998. And how long were you out there? Uh, about 21 years. The drugs made me uh, paranoid, even after not using for a long period of time. It made me um, right because manic. we go through withdrawals. It made me manic. It made me manic, and um, uh, and it caused me to um, not be able to uh, make good decisions at all. Well, emotionally, what it did was it just um, it made me have a bad um, 
I guess I'm gonna say it bad, but it made me uh, my self esteem low. Uh, it uh, I felt bad about myself all the time, even after some years clean. I didn't feel good. I, I didn't feel clean. Even after being clean, maybe I, I think that I probably didn't really feel good or clean to like like maybe ten years in recovery. This recovery is something else. You it takes you know it says we all have different degrees of sickness and we all progress at different rates. Mm -hmm. You know, and some areas it takes us much longer to recover. My clean date is March twenty second, nineteen ninety five. My name is Kim. I am in the program. How <laughs> is it in recovery for you today? Oh, it's wonderful. You know, I've been here for 24 years now. Um, my, my family loves me. I don't think they ever stop loving me, but they depends on me now. They respect what I'm, I'm doing. My daughters are all grown. When I first came, my youngest daughter was four years old. She's 28 now. Uh, my oldest daughter was 15. She's 39 now. And uh, they love the fact that I'm in recovery, you know, that I'm doing this thing, uh, staying clean. Because uh, now I got grandkids who's looking at me, you know. And because of that, I've learned to mature and become a better woman, a better mother, a better sister, and a better daughter, and a better friend. Stay tuned for more of Ask the Messengers. After receiving a delinquent property tax bill for the two lots connected to my home, I was concerned. I didn't even know that I had a past due bill. I went down to the Wayne County Treasurer's Office and the staff worked with me to keep my property out of foreclosure. My property taxes became delinquent after I fell behind on my bills. Treasurer Sabri and his staff came to the town hall in my city and provided information about resources available to help me. At the meeting, I found out about payment plan options. Let us help you. Our goal is zero owner-occupied properties getting foreclosed and going to the auction. Come down to our office at 400 Monroe in downtown Detroit on the fifth floor. Call 313-224-5990 during our normal business hours from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and until 6.30 p.m. on Wednesdays. Or email textinfo at waynecounty.com for assistance. Take the first step. Contact our office today. It worked for us. Hi, I'm Ashley Greaser, the Office Manager at Premier Supportive Services. Here at Premier, we offer a variety of services that include residential service, 24-hour residential, attended care, semi-independent, as well as many other services. So if you know of anyone that has been involved in a car accident, we are located at 17555 James Cousin, Suite 2. Or you can give us a call at 313-345-3668. Coming up on Ask the Messengers TV show. Changing an addict's life and providing support to the addict's family is the goal of the Live Right Structure Recovery Corp. Dialectical Behavior Therapy on Wednesdays. Spiritual Recovery and Yoga Classes on Thursdays. Physical and Nutritional Education Class on Fridays. Live Right also accepts donations of cars, trucks, boats, and campers in any condition. Again, for more information and a complete list of their events, go to their website at LiveRightStructuredCorp.com or call 586-217-5899. Life short, live right. Let's go to LaShawn and Michelle Delvo of St. Vincent and Sarah Fisher Center as she opens up about her own addictions and how she lives her life in recovery today. Hey, it's your girl LaShawn, street reporter for Ask the Messengers. Today, I'll be talking to a friend of mine, Michelle. Um, Michelle, can you tell us about your upbringing? Okay, I was born and raised in Detroit, been lived here all my life, and um, I went to uh, a, a Catholic elementary school and a public a high school. Um, I have my parents stayed together. I have both mom and dad, and I have three brothers, two older and one younger. Anybody party in the house? Anything? Um, my dad was uh, actually a World War II vet, and he was pretty strict and pretty scary. And he was uh, had post traumatic stress, and was a big big alcoholic. Really? He celebrated. He mourned. He, everything, everything was alcohol. Were you personally affected by drugs? Um, I actually 
I was affected very strong, you know, in the past by drugs. Uh, I grew up in the 70s. I was a teenager in the 70s, and I uh, did probably every drug there is. Um, you know, everybody that I hung around with was doing drugs, so. Is that how you started? How um, I actually did drugs for, until I was about 20 years old, and then uh, switched to alcohol. How old were you when you first picked up? I probably was uh, about 15 years old. Um, we used to do barbiturates, which is very uh, close to the same kind of effect as alcohol. Um, it's like a downer, make you pass out type of drug. Um, really? Okay. Two and all, second all. What was your drug of choice? <laughs> Downers was my drug of choice considering all the drugs. I didn't really like cocaine because it made me too up and I'm already kind of hyper. Um, I just wanted to be, I just wanted to be relaxed, passed out basically, forget about it. When did you hit your bottom? Uh, I hit my bottom quite a few times probably. Um, the last time I hit my bottom, um, I was in trouble with driving, with the law. I didn't have my driver's license and I was still getting drunk. I uh, woke up one morning after not remembering what happened the night before. Mm. And I looked in the mirror and I couldn't even recognize myself. Uh, my face was all beat up. I don't know what happened. Um, all swelled up and I, this is when I said to myself, I, I am not gonna die like this. I am not gonna meet my, ba my maker in a blackout. What's your clean date? My clean date is April 18th. When you went to get help, how did you go about it? Basically, I've been going to AA since in the 80s, um, either court ordered and on my own. Mm -hmm. um, I never went to a rehab. I really was not uh, physically addicted to it more than I was mentally addicted to alcohol. I was a uh, angry drunk. So somebody make me angry and I go on a, on a good drunk. Really? What keeps you clean today? Today, uh, much prayer, and, and, my, and my God, my maker, and, uh, and of course, AA. Mm -hmm. So you still make meetings? I make few meetings, mm -hmm. not, not like I used to in the beginning. But. How important is sponsorship to you? Sponsorship was saved me. Uh, my sponsor was very good. She gave me a real hard time um, at first, then she would uh, basically just ha say hello and hang up on me, um, you know, and kept me going. and. I love her very much. What are you doing with your life today? Uh, so it's been a long, it's been a long process. I just turned 60 years old, so I, you know, I'm very proud of that, making it to this point. I had a lot of friends that died because of alcohol and car accidents, and because of the effects of alcohol. Also, uh, I went to school for about six years and uh, got my degree in social work, mental health. Um, I I did work for. A uh, few substance abuse places, but as I was telling you before, I couldn't. I just couldn't take it anymore. The heartbreak of it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm working for uh, St. Vincent and Sarah Fisher Center, mm -hmm. where we do uh, helping people get their GEDs, and um, it's a much better outcome than working for substance abuse. Although substance abuse will always be dear to me, I, I just love helping people accomplish, you know, get their education going. Can you tell us? how drugs have affected the city from your eyesight in the years gone by? Well, I, and I was thinking about that a lot lately and I've been talking about it. And, uh, you know, in the 70s, it was a big heroin epidemic again uh, from the guys coming home from Vietnam mm -hmm. and all that. Um, and it went around about the 80s, started being about cocaine and the 90s about crack. And now here we are back again with the heroin and it can get everybody. I mean, it gets everybody of every, you know, culture, um, uh, income, you know, I, I've seen it destroy. So I hate heroin. I've seen it destroy so many people in my family too. What message from your heart, if you could say to save somebody out there that's curious about the alcohol or don't believe alcohol is a drug, what would you say to help them? I would say to never forget where you came from, but don't dwell in the past. Believe in yourself and forgive yourself. 
because it's never too late to change for the better. And if I can do it, you can do it. One of the reasons I enrolled here was to get my GD certificate to further my education and my schooling to make a good career for my life. Everybody want, makes you feel like family and you feel right at home. When I first started, I didn't even know how to add. I love the tutors, I love the classmates, I love the environment, the people, also the knowledge I'm getting. The knowledge I'm getting and never thought I would be able to be that great in math. It's definitely worth it. My advice to a person, if you're trying to quit, uh, to my opinion, is um, go to treatment, get around positive people who going to help you with your struggle. Get in a 12-step program after you, um, after you finish with treatment. Go to church. Focus on positive people who who gonna help you in your recovery. Because if you don't be around positive people, things will come along because you're gonna deal with no matter what. And then you might go back out. Cause I know I'm living proof. Cause even though I didn't have a 12 step program, I know God helped me, but I went back out. But thank God for the 12 step program because I got 11 years clean. I've been in recovery for 10 months. And how long were you in prison? 36 years total. Is that consistent or in and out? In and out. I did the last time I did 16 years. What is, what is life like for you now? It's good, it's great. Like Tony the Tiger, great. What was your bottom? My bottom? Um, when I went to prison and um, lost touch with my kids, my mother wouldn't let me see them because I was doing the same thing over and over and over. So she said, I don't be a decision until I get myself together. And I love my kids, so that's what I did. Alcohol makes me very sexual. And um, I talked to this guy, and I ended up talking to him that night, and he asked, can he come over and get me? And I said, no, but you could come over, because I had kids, too, at the time. And uh, he came over, and he said, well, let's go to the store and get, you know, get some coolers. He said, I seen that you like coolers. And we were, I said, okay, because I just wanted to drink, wanted to kill all the feelings that I had going on inside of me. And um, he passed the store. And I said, well, the store is right there. He said, I know. But we pulled up at this house. And he said, okay, well, I'm gonna run in. My mom need me, yada, yada, yada. She's in a wheelchair. I didn't even know this guy. And so he said, come on in for a minute. And um, I stepped in and when we went in, I was expecting to be in a living room or something, but when we went in, we were like instantly in a bedroom. It was like through a back door. <sighs> and I instantly had a gun up to my head. And uh, he told me, he said, today is your day, bitch, you gonna die. And he commenced to rape me. All I can see is, if you had not wanted to drink and altered your judgment, you wouldn't even be in this. when you decided to drive drunk. There could be a crash.
people could get hurt or killed. You could get arrested. But one thing's for sure. You were wrong when you said it was no big deal. I'll be right back. Hi! You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home, just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. They said if I got drunk, I'd be one of the guys. They said if I got drunk, I'd be one of the guys. They lied. Find out the truth about drugs. Drugfreeworld.org We'll be right back with more of Ask the Messengers. Looking for the finest quality in men's clothing? Visit Compo Clothing. Located in the heart of downtown Hamtramck since 1931. They carry a full line of suits, shoes, shirts, ties, and clergy robes. What sets Compo Clothing apart from other stores? The personal service. And they offer free alterations for life. They also have no charge layaway. Ask about their $98 suit sale. Compo Clothing, located at 9643 Joseph Compo. After receiving a delinquent property tax bill for the two lots connected to my home, I was concerned. I didn't even know that I had a past due bill. I went down to the Wayne County Treasurer's Office and the staff worked with me to keep my property out of foreclosure. My property taxes became delinquent after I fell behind on my bills. Treasurer Sabri and his staff came to the town hall in my city and provided information about resources available to help me. At the meeting, I found out about payment plan options. Let us help you. Our goal is zero owner-occupied properties getting foreclosed and going to the auction. Come down to our office at 400 Monroe in downtown Detroit on the fifth floor. Call 313-224-5990 during our normal business hours from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and until 6.30 p.m. on Wednesdays. Or email textinfo at waynecounty.com for assistance. Take the first step. Contact our office today. It worked for us. Changing an addict's life and providing support to the addict's family is the goal of the Live Right Structure Recovery Corp. Dialectical Behavior Therapy on Wednesdays. Spiritual Recovery and Yoga Classes on Thursdays. Physical and Nutritional Education Class on Fridays. Live Right also accepts donations of cars, trucks, boats, and campers in any condition. Again, for more information and a complete list of their events, go to their website at LiveRightStructuredCorp.com or call 586-217-5899. Life short, live right. Sex is a biological variable. Our men and women have different biologies. Our genes are largely similar, but there are also uh, genes that are specific. Um, to our, um, to our um, gender or sex. So it's a biological variable. It's, it relates to biological processes that represent uh, us as being um, a male or female. Uh, gender, on the other hand, is our, our more psychological and psychosocial and cultural variables. So we use gender for those kinds of uh, measures or thinking about outcomes that relate to uh, psychology or culture or social cultural variables. Uh, so thinking about uh, the effects of a drug on the body, that would be a sex variable. Uh, on the other hand, if we start to think about the rates of, um, of uh, abuse in men and women and what may be influencing whether women inf will become addicted to a drug, uh, versus men at higher rates or lower rates. We might look for gender differences because they might actually also be, in addition to biology, they might also be 
uh, cultural and, and social and psychological variables. As I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony. In my active addiction, um, you know, once it got out of control, it wasn't fun anymore. I think pretty much almost every moment of it was pretty dark. Um, one of the, the main things that I remember is a day I could have lost my life, a friend, of, well, a using friend of mine, and we went to a house to, you know, get some dope. And she went upstairs, and I'm looking like, okay, it's been 20 minutes, what you doing up there? I go up there, and she's being gang raped by several different men, and I'm trying to grab her and pull her out, and I have a guy coming to me and put a gun to the back of my head, and then one put one in my mouth. And it was only by the grace of God that I made it out that house alive. Um, you know, I turned around and I was able to get the gun out of my mouth and was telling them, you know, if you're going to shoot me, then shoot me. I was insane, obviously, grabbing the barrel with a gun, pushing it deeper in my forehead, telling the man to pull the trigger. But in the inside, I'm screaming like, oh, God, please don't let him kill me. And, you know, the day I made it out the house, I was thankful, but it did not stop me from using it. Today I'm clean. I make meetings. I talk to my sponsor every day. I'm doing what I need to do to stay clean. I'm involved in church. Do you need a banner, brochure, or business cards? What about posters or funeral programs? No matter what your design and printing needs are, RNL Color Graphics can help. RNL Color Graphics has been serving the metropolitan area for more than 25 years and has also been honored to be the official printing partner for the Aretha Franklin Family Foundation. So if you're looking for an official Aretha Franklin funeral program, tribute item, or a custom design job, give us a call at 313-345-3838 or visit us on the web at rnlcolor.com. Thank you for tuning in to Ask the Messengers. Do you have a recovery story? Well, we'd like to hear it. Please visit our website and email us with your story because we love to share it with those who are in need. Also, if you have a question that you'd like for us to answer on the air, please send us your question in our inbox and we would be glad to answer it no matter what you have on your heart. And then we ask all of you, please follow us on social media. Thanks again for tuning in to Ask the Messengers. We'll see you next time. Won't you help us to do exactly what our motto is, and that is to help save lives? Won't you send a generous donation to the information there on the screen? We would love to have you as part of our partnership to help save lives. Uh, you may not be able to go out in the street. You may not be able to go come here to the show, but you can send your donation that helps us save lives. You, we invite you to come to any of our meetings that is held here at our facility here on Schaefer. You absolutely are welcome. We have a, a Wednesday meeting from 5 to 7 p.m. and then also a Friday meeting that goes from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference.